Admiral. Manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receivers. And maker of a complete line of television combinations. Admiral radios and radio phonographs. Admiral electric ranges with Lexo heat and the famous Admiral Dual Temp and Conventional Refrigerator. Presents Light Out. Tonight, the air is electric with excitement. An eager audience is packing the theater, anxiously awaiting the return to the footlights of Carlton Dane, the great actor, after ten years' retirement. The play is Richard III, but the audience will see much more than Shakespeare tonight. So... Join me now on the edge of your chair for the curtain call. Light out. How can they? How long has it been? Eight, ten years? Ten years exactly. <laughs> and they said he'd never act again. I thought you knew all about that. He's the greatest living American actor. Mm. They always say after 10 years, he's better than ever. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I never saw him. Oh. Well, who was it? His wife? No. She was an actress, too. Oh? She killed herself. It was all over the papers. Give me a little hug. Mind up me wounds. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. Oh, I did the dream. Oh, cruel conscience, how dost thou afflict me? The lights burn blue. It is now dead midnight. Cold, fearful drops stand on my trembling flesh. What? Do I fear myself? There's none else by. No one but me, Carlton. No one but Alex. Richard loves Richard. That is, I am I. Is there a murderer here? Yes, Carlton. There's a murderer here. No! Yes. I am. Uh, then fly. What? From the self? Great reason why, lest I revenge. What? Myself upon myself? Yes, Colton. Revenge. My revenge, Colton. Oh, 
Good evening, Mr. Gosling. Thank heaven you've come, sir. Hello, Williams. Where is he? He's in the study, sir, waiting for you. Hello. How is he? Well, I think you'd best judge for yourself, sir. Would you go in, please? Wait a minute. Has there been anyone here before me? The press? Any photographers? No one, sir. Miss Lydia left all of you to possess the moon. Would you go in, please? Carlton? Carlton, where are you? I'm here, Peter. Strange. I was standing on the balcony just now. It seemed but a step to the pavement. Yet it's 18 stories from the street. Carlton, what is it? What? Oh. Oh, thank you, Peter. I knew you'd come. Oh, I came as soon as I could. The usual details in a case like this. Reporters, police, refunds, that opening night crowd. Now tell me, Carlton. What happened tonight? I want to know. Make yourself a drink. You tell me, huh? <laughs> oh, what infamous fabrication did you manufacture for the press, huh? I told them you were ill, of course. A slight heart condition. My cause is heart, and thine has no less reason. Opening night excitement, nerves, tension. Mm. Your long delayed return to the stage. Well, don't worry about it, Carlton. We'll all make for a satisfactory press. Yes, the filthy press pots must be fed, eh, Peter? <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Faded star fails in comeback due to drunkenness, uh, loss of memory, and other natural causes. Then, after a week or two of complete rest, we reopen. Stop it! I have had ten years of rest. We play tomorrow night. What is it, Carlton? What happened tonight? I'm sorry, Peter. Twenty years we've been together. Twenty sad and glorious years of theater and triumph. Of tears and heartbreak. And madness, too. I couldn't have made it alone. We've met disaster before, Carlton. Much worse than you. Now, what happened to me? I've got to tell you, Peter. I've had it locked up too long. You've been my friend, Peter. You love me, huh? You won't hate me, will you? I've, I've got to tell you. About tonight, yes. yes. Alexis. I saw Alexis. Alexis? But Carlton... I don't know. Sounds mad, doesn't it? <laughs> Carlton Dane, the last of the mad Dane. Not the melancholy Dane, Peter. The mad Dane. <laughs> Malcolm Dane, my father. He drowned himself in a torrent of drunkenness and debauchery. Christine Day, my mother, she was driven to insanity and death. Trying to assemble the fragments of a distorted mind and heart. Alexis, my wife, the jewel of her generation, the loveliest, the most hauntingly beautiful, the most untalented actress on the American stage. Alexis was a suicide. No, Carlton. It was murder, darling. Remember. Murder, Carlton. Uh, My murder. Help me, help me. Murder, Carlton. My murder. Murder, Carlton. Carlton, you're very ill. No, 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 I'm all right. It's Alexis. Alexis said I was a murderer. You'll be my friend. Hey, I'm not a murderer. Oh, are you all right? Oh, of course, Lydia, my child. Quite all right. You said you wanted to be alone until Peter came. Mm. Thank you, Peter, darling, for coming. What would we do without you? Well, you'll have to do without me tomorrow night. Carlton insists that he's well enough to go on. Carlton, do you think you ought? <laughs> do you think I ought? Listen to her, Peter. Our first appearance in New York together. Carlton and Lydia Dane, for the first time in Measure for Measure. 
Why, they'll eat it up, my dear. You'll be magnificent. Peter, I give you Miss Lydia Dane in the immortal Isabella. Miss Lydia Dane. There'll be a star born tomorrow night, Carlton. A beautiful girl. A fresh and brilliant talent. You know, the public rather fancies itself a star maker. But for you, Lydia, the sudden rush to fame. with our Lights Out story for tonight. Lights on for Admiral. Of all the pictures in your home, which do you look at the most? Moving from room to room, I suppose it's difficult to say. But not in this home. Here, the answer is easy. It's the one on their television screen. The big new Admiral 20-inch picture that brings such a full measure of enjoyment to all the family. Here's the picture that's the envy of the engineering world. The one that meets the real test of outstanding performance. It's clear, even close up. Let's go behind the screen to see how Admiral gives you the finest picture in television. First, pictures are sharper because of finer focusing and finer definition. Made possible by Admiral's new Flexomatic Focus Coil, exclusive with Admiral. Second, they're brighter because Admiral's revolutionary new rectangular Dynaray tube gives you the whitest white and blackest blacks ever obtained on a television tube. Third, they're clearer because Admiral's unique high-powered circuits deliver up to 50% more picture detail. Yes, sharper, brighter, clearer. Clearest picture of all in the new Admirals for 1951. And with it all, there's the powerful, compact, Dynamagic radio unit with triple play phonograph for any size, any speed record. Yet with only one control, so simple even a child can operate it. Ask your Admiral dealer for a free home demonstration of this beautiful three-foot theater. Thanks to Admiral's famous directional rotoscope antenna, there's no installation necessary. Just plug in and play. Your Admiral dealer is offering a liberal trade-in allowance on your old 7, 10, or 12-inch set. See your Admiral dealer and start enjoying big screen television in a 20-inch set made by Admiral, manufacturer of the world's most powerful television receiver. It's been a wonderful party, Carlton. Music, laughter, the coronation of Lydia Day. And as usual, I'm the last to leave. You were wonderful tonight, my dear. You know, if you can forego your wine long enough to say a fun good night to Peter. Hmm? Peter, I thank you for everything. And I knight you, my Prince Tom. Good night, dear. Good night, Carlton. As you are. No, no, don't bother. I know what it is. You should be very proud, Carlton. Tonight, another Dane reached the heights. Mm -hmm. See that she gets a good night's rest. You too. Good night, Carlton. Good night. Good night, William. Good night, sir. Lydia Dane, spawn of the greatest actor of his generation, 
A morsel of her mother's beauty, but touched with the Dane genius. I love the world tonight, Carlton. I love the world and people and theaters and audiences. I love audiences best. I shaped your infant talents, my dear. I watched over you. I developed your adolescent talents. Carlton, uh, I... You wish to say something, my dear? Yes. I was about to call it a night. Suddenly, I'm very tired. Tired? You? <laughs> oh, nonsense. No, 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 no. You'll have some more wine. We have many things to talk over, my dear. You became a star tonight, you know? A night long to remember. The fledgling tried her wings tonight. You heard it, my dear. It was wonderful, wasn't it? Carlton, <laughs> I'm deadly tired. Oh, they've all had their little say, haven't they? Huh? But we know, we know, don't we, Lydia? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've heard it a thousand times. Carlton, you were wonderful. Damien, you were magnificent. <laughs> and tonight, tonight you heard it. Dear, my dear Lydia, you were divinely superb. <laughs> you think you were superbly divine, my dear? Hmm? Carlton, you're drunk and tired. But since the curtain's down and we've dropped the pretense of the adoring and loving father-daughter act... Yes, daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight was mine. You can never take it away from me. No. You're rushing. I was on my own tonight. I was free tonight, free for the first time. Yes, it was all your bag of tricks, but I earned them. Ah. Oh, how I earned them. They're mine now, Carlton. What did Madame Bernhardt think of me tonight? Was I superbly divine? Hmm? You were perfect to cook. You always are. Well, don't be, don't be rude, Lydia. I was perfect, eh? Well, oh, now, please, sit down, sit down. You're tired. Very tired, don't you remember? Sit down! Oh, that's better, don't you think? What do you want, Carl? What? What? What should I, why should I want something? Oh, did I tell you that I liked you? Yes, I liked you very much. I thought... I thought you performed very nicely. Very nicely. Adequate but nice. Now you've said it. Hmm? Are you happy, Carlton? Is that what you want? You remind me of Alexis tonight. Poor oh, dear Alexis. She couldn't act. And is this the same delirious joy you got when you mocked her? Your mother was a fake. But she was beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, yes. They loved her beauty. And you hated it for that, didn't you? Just as you hate me. As you hated anyone you thought you loved. Well, I loved her. Yes, yes, you loved her, but you never knew her. She was stupid and... And she was beautiful, that's right. I loved my mother. Why? She was cold and hollow and empty. She was beauty without fire. She was kind, generous, and good. <laughs> You're right, you know. She was without fire. Your kind of evil fire. She was no genius. But she had warmth and goodness and beauty. I knew. I had greatness and evil, eh? The good die young, my dear. You know, your Alexis didn't love me. I loved her. But, oh, I worshipped her. But Alexis didn't love me, so she had to die. Had to die? Yes, just as you have to die, my dear. 
Mind you, suicide can be quite accidental. Well, that is in the car, too, you know. Yes, I know. Yes, but you didn't know that I was driving the car, did you? No, no, I didn't. No, no one knew. Everyone thought it was Alexis. But it wasn't. It was me. It was I. <laughs> I knew the car would go off the road. Alexis didn't love me. I lived. But Alexis had to die. No, it's not true. It's not true. Quite true. Quite true, my no. dear. Stop it. Stop it. You had that chance tonight. They loved you, Lydia. They loved you. They loved you too much, my daughter. I'm the one they really love, Carlton Dane. I'm the one. Everything you did tonight and everything you are is a child of my greatness. Oh. Oh. You are absolutely mad. I was magnificent tonight. They loved me. You said it, Carlton. You, they loved me. And you killed me for that, didn't you? Just as you killed Alexis. They loved her too much, didn't they? I loved Alexis. But the crowd loved her too, too much. And so she had to die. So love with the hate, Carlton. No, no. Yes, Carlton, yes. An evil, rotten madness that killed. Yes, I heard this tonight. They cheered for me, Carlton, for me. Not for you, not for you, but me, Lydia. I'm the, Lydia, one, I'm the one they really love. You killed my mother. That's if you kill me. No, Carlton, no. I'll tell him next if I know. I'll be with her. We leave you to die alone, Carlton. Six weeks, Carlton. You've done nothing but sit here and talk of reopening. As in you, Peter. What does my friend, my manager, my participator in the profits suggest? Forget the theater. For this season, yes. Don't you see, Carlton, it's just not in the card. First your opening night collapse, then Lydia's... Stop it! Lydia Dane is dead. Carlton Dane, the theater of alive and living. Oh, Peter. Must I sit here night after night alone, waiting? Am I? Am I to die? Carlton, listen to me. Peter, you love me? You're still my friend? Yes, of course. Then you must understand what I said to you that day. Alexis said I was a murderer. Lydia believed her. Now, now Lydia's with her. Carlton, you've got to stop torturing yourself. They'll torture me. They'll come back for me. Peter. You must go. Good night, Peter. Whatever you say, Carlton. Huh. Don't bother, and I'll let myself out. Oh, uh, about the theater, we'll uh, reopen in two weeks. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Mm. We'll have to find a replacement. There'll uh, be no replacement. But Lydia... No, there'll be no replacement. <laughs> Good night, Peter. 
Good night, Carl. Yeah. And Peter, would you mind telling William to go to bed? Thank you. Good night. him away. What is it? Why did you come back? I've seen a lipstick, Carlton. Where are you? Lydia, I can't see you. I can't see you. I'm here, Carl. Right here. Oh. Just another step. Another Yes. And this is here too. And your audience, Carlton. Can't you hear them? Don't you love us, Carlton? Oh, yes. Give me your hand, Lydia. Help me. Just one more step. Well, Carlton Bain has taken his final curtain call before an uninvited audience of two which followed him to the ends of the earth and beyond. And now, before we tell you the exciting Lights Out drama for next week, here is important news of something which you may be needing very much in your own home. No matter how large the family or how small the kitchen, here's the refrigerator that will meet your every need. The new Admiral 11 cubic foot refrigerator, designed with no wasted space. Look, the full-width freezer chest holds 60 pounds of food. The full-length cold compartment goes clear down to the floor. The deep, wide shelves give you more than 20 square feet of shelf area. And the new servidor with handy butter keeper. Simply no wasted space in this new 11-cubic-foot Admiral refrigerator for 1951. See it at your Admiral dealer's. Join us again on Lights Out next Monday night when your Admiral dealer will present Robert Stack in an unusual Lights Out tale entitled Strange Legacy. Meanwhile, be sure to see Admiral's fast-moving variety show, Stop the Music, over another television network. Consult your newspaper for time and station. This is Ralph Paul bidding you good night for Admiral.